Hello and welcome to the Games Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be talking about lighting in Godot 3. We're going to cover the basics with real-time lighting. So you have three main lights that you can use in Godot 3. You have a directional light, a spotlight, and an omni light. This is going to be a light source that is so far away that it seems like it's projecting light in one direction. And then we have a spotlight, and you've most likely seen these before in your home or in other buildings. These are usually lights that have a fixture of some sort. And then we have an omni light. And this light is going to radiate out in all directions. In each one of your lights, most of the properties are the same. You have light, shadow, and editor. But there is a special property for each one of them. Directional light has directional shadow, spotlight has spot, and omni light has omni. So under editor, we have an option to choose editor only. So when you play the game, this light won't actually show up. It won't render. And then under shadow, we have shadows enabled to show any shadows to begin with. You can change the color, and under light, you can change the color of the light itself, and you can change the intensity of it. So now for the special properties. Under the directional light, we have directional shadows. And the first one we have is mode. And one way to think of the mode is that these are quality settings. So we have orthogonal, get kind of a soft blurred shadow, and then you have PSSM2, and you have PSSM4. These algorithms are known as parallel split shadow maps. And the idea here is that it'll generate a shadow map depending on the distance. With PSSM4, you'll get four textures. With PSSM2, you'll get two textures. With PSSM4 being the most expensive. With each one of the splits, you'll be adjusting how they render based on the camera. And then a really important one for directional lights is normal bias. So sometimes your lighting calculations won't be as precise as you want them to be. And with the normal bias, you can adjust how it contacts you'll be offsetting the bias of it. Now, one thing you'll notice is, as you adjust this bias, you're also adjusting all of the shadows. Sometimes they're growing, sometimes they're shrinking. Depending on what you want visually, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to that. And the last one I wanna talk about here is max distance. So this is the distance from the camera to the object, whether or not a shadow will render. So as we lower this, you'll see the shadows start to disappear. And similar, if you start to wheel your camera back, the further you go, it'll start to disappear. Next up, we have the spotlight. In the spotlight settings, we have two main adjustments, and that's the range, is how far it can reach, and then we have the angle. Is it a tight cone, or is it a really flat cone? And then with both of these, we have attenuation. So this is going to control the fall off. And next, we have the omni light. And in here, once again, we have range, just the range, and we can adjust the fall off. With the shadow mode, we're choosing whether or not the shadows will be rendered to a cube map or to a dual paraboloid texture. With the paraboloid, it's gonna be cheaper, but it's also not gonna be as accurate. In the shadow detail, this is an interesting one. You're choosing whether or not there's gonna be more detail horizontally or vertically. And sometimes you'll see that when you choose one over the other, you don't get the results that you want. Now with the omni light and the spotlight, you're gonna have visual gizmos that you can adjust the range or the angle. Then the last thing to talk about on all the lights is that they have a call mask and that they have layers. If you wanna know more information about them, I've already made a video on layers and masks. Now if you've been following along and you've been looking at your directional light, you may be thinking, my shadows do not look good. And that's because there's one more thing to look at. If you go to project, project settings, you can go to rendering and then to quality. You'll see directional shadow and shadow atlas. The size for the directional shadow is gonna to relate strictly to the directional light. And then the shadow atlas, this is gonna to relate to the omni lights and spotlights. Now as you adjust these numbers, you're not gonna see any change in the editor. And that's because once you change these, you're gonna to wanna to save everything and restart the engine. And then in combination, we also have filtering modes for the shadows. We have disabled, PCF5, and PCF 13. The PCFs are gonna try and blur the shadow to try and remove some of that choppiness, with PCF 13 being a higher quality. All right guys, that covers lighting basics in Godot 3. If you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.